Hey there! In this video, you're going to learn the essentials of church lighting design. All right, uh, Boomer and I are about to head up to uh, the Lakewood campus of Red Rocks Church. We are going to meet with Mark Ray. Mark is a lighting designer, and he is going to teach us about uh, just the best practices of lighting design for uh, for the church and for designing lighting for worship. I love the lighting at Red Rocks Church. I think they always do an excellent job of doing it in a way that's tasteful but not too distracting. And I, I think there's going to be lots of great principles that you can pull away uh, from this video about how to do light design at your church, even if you're using using uh, not a multi-million dollar lighting system, but it's not multi-million, maybe, maybe it's like tens of thousands of dollars or something. <laughs> something it's a big, because you're going to see these lights and you're like, man, those are so cute, cool, we'll never get them. You can still get, you know, budget-friendly lighting and still apply these same principles uh, to the lighting system at your church. So, but first things first, we're actually going to go get lunch with Mark, um, and then we're going to go to the church after. So, let's head out. <laughs> Yeah, church front pads. Well, yeah. Let's go. Let's jam okay, out okay, to okay. some pads. Dope. Dope. Download your free church front pads. Link in. There's a lighting genius. I'm looking for. Uh, I'm what? looking for Mark Ray. What are you guys doing? What I'm are you guys looking, doing here? I'm looking for a Mr. Mark Ray, a lighting, lighting extraordinaire. Can't find him here. I think I found him right here. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with Mark Ray and, and Boomer. He's holding the camera, mm -hmm. and uh, we're grabbing some lunch. And uh, I just want to introduce you guys to Mark. Uh, how about we just go ahead, Mark? Uh, just tell us like a little bit about um, your a little bit about your story and your role at Red Rocks, um, and yeah, just, just what you're up to. Introduce yourself to the Church Front community. Sure. Uh, my name is Mark Ray. Um, I've been on staff at Red Rocks Church for about eight years now. Um, Started out as a volunteer for about five years or so, and then the church grew and grew. I needed someone to come on full-time staff um, in production, and so the first I was the first person they called for that. So I was like, sure, I'll do it. Um, and since then, I've kind of grown from, um, away from the audio side of things, kind of where I started out into more lighting and producing, um, and technical producing, I guess you could call it. So that's kind of where I am now. Oversee Lakewood Campus production as well as a lot of major. Um, events for to come through Lakewood campus, concerts, um, youth events, that kind of thing. So you've been at Red Rocks pretty much almost since the beginning, right? Almost, yeah. And, and Red Rocks, for those of you guys who don't know, like Red Rocks started in 2005 here in Colorado, and it started with a couple dozen people or so, um, and then and now in 2018, it's how many how many weekly tennis now? Uh, it, it fluctuates. I mean, anywhere between 14 and 15,000 weekends. Yeah, so it, fluctu it fluctuates by a thousand people every Sunday, so which is kind <laughs> of insane to think about, but it's cool to like. Mark has kind of been been there the whole time along the along the way. So, um, what was it? What was it like in the uh, early days? What was it like? Oh, it was it was rough. It was scrappy. We did what we could to push stuff together to make uh, Sundays work. Um, didn't have a lot of resources. Didn't have a lot of people to help out with things. So we kind of just pieced together some production elements, um, some some lighting, some PA. Um, we had stage wedges for monitors. We had, you, I mean, you name it from what you can start, what you, what you think of starting out with the church. Man, it's really dark in here. Hey, hey, Mark, can you turn the lights on? 
Mm. There we go. All right, so Mark and I and Boomer behind the camera, we all finished lunch at Panera, drove a couple miles down the road. We're here at Red Rocks Church Lakewood campus. It is a really beautiful facility. I love coming here to worship and I especially love just the lighting design, the sound, everything about the production. Let's go ahead and roll that B-roll of this space. Okay, so for the remainder of this video, Mark and I just wanna give you guys some quick tips about how to light the, the different types of scenes you're gonna to have to create in your church, how to do that well and strategically. Uh, and I think the best way to do that is to actually just show like how do you light a pastor or a, a speaker, a communicator on stage? How do you like light a worship leader? Uh, and then how do you use like colors and moving lights to kind of uh, add ambience and from with that backlighting and side lighting? Uh, and then we'll also talk a little bit about haze too. So first thing we need to do, I think we need to find a subject to be our cool, young, hip, relevant, uh, pastor or speaker. Uh, do you think we can find any of those around here? Probably, yeah. Okay. Probably. So fortunately we found Judah Smith. He's with us here in the house here at Red Rocks today. Just kidding. Uh, this is Cam. He is uh, one of the youth pastors here at Red Rocks Church. He's a great guy. So he's going to be our subject of a communicator. You're going to pretend like you're, you would be preaching today. Um, and Mark, let's go ahead and build a lighting scene of, to, to light Cam and just kind of talk us through what you're doing along the way. All right. So to start out with my subject, I have lovely Cam here who's going to be our speaking pastor for today, lovely. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is, um, to just kind of simplify things uh, from a larger scale, I'm gonna bring in only a few lights at a time to kind of show you the angles that we're shooting at um, and how that all looks when it's all coming together. So to start out, I'm gonna bring a light in from the house right side. So you can see here, I have a light coming in from a little bit of an angle off to his left side up there that is shooting from, shooting his left side of his body it's also coming at an angle to where it's getting his left side of his face a little bit more, his ears, the left side of his arm. And you can see too, it's getting from head to toe. There's no dark spots. It's, pretty, it's a pretty flat light all the way through. So what I want to try to do now is replicate that with the other side. Try to create an experience with two lights coming at him from the front to try to round him out a little bit more. Because obviously one light right here from this angle isn't going to look good for his teaching pastor. So to help do that, I'm going to add in a second light coming from the other side. So there he is, with two lights coming in a little bit of an angle off to the side. So you can tell right now, he, if, you, if you were to not move at all, he'd be lit pretty well from the front. There's no backlight, so it kind of looks a little bit one dimensional. So right now, what I can do is add a little bit of backlight um, to help round out his, his body a little bit more, his shoulders, his hair, um, that'll help. I don't know, I feel like his body's rounded out pretty well. So let me, so let me go ahead and add some, uh, some backlight in here. You're gonna see how that, Helps. Oh, that's a little too hot. Uh, you see, yeah, 100% backlight. So you can see, just for all intents and purposes, you see when those lights came on, it's a little bit warmer of glow on his shoulders. His head um, glows a little bit more. His shoulders. That way, when you do, we are looking at him, at him from the audience, the congregation. You can kind of see he's not one-dimensional. He's actually three-dimensional. He's he's here in real life. So the backlight right there really helps bring out the full experience. So he doesn't look so one-dimensional. So that's how you light a speaker. Just have some great front lighting, the two, two lights up here, and have you know one or two back lights, and uh, there you go. Is there anything you can do to make him look, less, look like less of a tool? No. Uh, hi, uh, my name's Corey Miller. I'm one of the uh, worship leaders at Red Rocks Church. Mark is gonna show, show us here how, how he lights me, a worship leader. <laughs> so go ahead, Mark. So good. All right, so letting a worship leader is a little bit different in that I'm not gonna use any of the same lights that I used to light the speaker wash. I'm gonna use a different light dedicated just for each individual worship position, whether they're downstage worship leaders, upstage, drums, guitar, bass, keys, organ, whatever you have on your stage. Um, this is how we light them. Uh, each individual light is dedicated just for that person alone in that position. So right here I have keys, on stage left. What I do with 
each worship leader, each position is I have one light dedicated to them to where I don't have a second light coming off from the side. And what that what that kind of brings to the camera eye specifically is kind of a more focus to just just the front of their face a little bit. Um, and so I'm not gonna have two lights, three lights, four lights shooting at one worship leader. That can be a little bit overkill. Um, from my opinion, I like one light per worship leader. It just gives a better feel for when you're in the audience. They don't feel like, you don't feel like they're overly lit. You don't feel like they're too lit, I guess. Too lit. Uh, <laughs> um, so you'll see right here, I have this one lip soil, this one source for coming in from a little bit more to the house right side. It's not directly onto um, like directly 90 degrees onto this position. It's a little bit off to the side. And what that does is it brings in some shadows a little bit more, so a little, a little bit more depth as well. If they were straight on, each, if each individual worshiping light were straight on, you would just see a, like just straight, no shadows, no nothing. It would just be a flat look. But with the light coming from the side, you see a little more shadows. Us worship leaders like the uh, dramatic, emotional look. Dramatic. Not that we're dramatic or emotional no, people, but... No. So you'll see right here, I have my house right light come on. There you go. Yeah. So that's coming in from, that's a 26 degree barrel on a um, Source 4. It's a little bit warmer color, as you can tell, a little bit more amber in there. Um, and from this side, there's a couple, there's some shadows on your right-hand side, but from your left side, you're a little bit more, um, you're a little brighter, you're a well, little well lit, and that brings some cool shadows for the camera eye that's on this side um, of the stage. And so, the the light is not directly in front of him, straight up and down. It's a little bit off-centered, a little bit to house right, stage left side, to help create that dramatic effect with your with your key light. So what I'm going to do is to help round out his. Um, his image a little bit more is I'm going to um, backlight him, backlight Jake with a little bit of colored wash light. So from this area, I can click on this wash light, and there I have a good backlight for Jake. Yeah. And I think this is a good point, you know, talking about uh, the purpose of kind of these color washes on stage. Of you don't have any of those color washes like up on the front truss up here. It really looks like it's just back and side lighting. Correct, yep. And what's cool about the, the color LED washes too is that I can do a little color changing if I want to. If I want to try to get more of an amber color that matches a little bit more um, amber tones, kind of, that's kind of matching your front light a little bit, I can do that too. Like that. Nice. Um, then again, if I want to get more real moody, I can go to a darker color, more blue. I can do some less saturation to it. You have a lot of flexibility with these colors and these wash lights to add some cool backlight to your worship leaders. So as we already mentioned, most of the, the color lights that uh, they have on stage are not on the, the front lighting truss, creating front lighting. Those are mostly ellips, ellipsoidal lights um, and lights that have more that more like natural um, tungsten look. Is that what I'm, yep. the right language, I guess? Uh, most of the LED lights here at the on the Red Rock stage are usually like, they're kind of like back slash side lighting. Um, so I guess, Mark, can you talk us through a little bit um, about like, let's just talk about color combinations and like the use of color. So we have another camera that's capturing like the whole wide, the whole stage so you guys can see what we're talking about here. Um, how do you go about just choosing colors? What, is, what are your favorite colors to use? Which ones do you avoid? Um, give us some tips on color. Sure. So let's go through some color choices here. Um, I'll bring out my wash lights. So here, here they are, kind of white downstage, shooting downstage a little bit, kind of straight, um, straight wash. No, you know, different weird positions. There's no X's, no nothing. They're just on in their home position. Um, kind of like a good walk-in look is what I use this a lot for. Um, and then I'll bring in my spot fixtures as well. Um, those will come in downstage as well. Kind of the same idea behind that. Kind of like a home position, a good starting point for my wash and spot fixtures. So. What I'll do is I can go through some color combinations here. Um, for our spot fixtures specifically, um, they have what's called a, a color wheel inside them. They're not color mixing like the wash fixtures are. So there's a physical wheel or two inside the light that's rotating in front of the lens that's creating those colors. 
some higher end fixtures do have color mixing. These ones just don't. Um, so I'm kind of bound to the color choices that these lights have inside them. So if you were seeing me scroll through here, I have yellow, blue, some green, red, magenta, dark blue, and orange. I do have a second color wheel um, that can do some amber, a little bit lighter um, amber, it's almost like color temperature, and then green, almost like a UV color, orange, pink, fuchsia, and then dark blue again. Um, so how I go about lighting a song is I usually use my wash lights first. Um, that is just because they can color mix and I can try to create different colors based on whatever I, I like for that song. So if I go through now, right now they're on and they're white, I can take my software here, kind of scroll through the deep saturations of each color, see what, I like it, what looks good for color choices. And if I don't like that saturation of that, I can back it off a little bit, come down, do the same kind of scroll, go through my colors, same exact way. So my, my theory behind that is, um, usually faster songs, I'll use brighter colors, slower songs, sometimes darker colors, but that's not always the case either. Sometimes a slower song, I'll use all amber, um, or a lot of white and amber, just to create a, a different look that people aren't used to seeing. Say if we have a, um, a slower song, I'm gonna go to do a little bit like a light blue color right here, and then I'm gonna bring in my spot fixtures as well. And that looks like a desaturated blue, is mm -hmm. that what that is? Yep, okay. it's a, more of a light blue, yeah. definitely desaturated a little bit. Yeah. I'll bring my spots, obviously that kind of blows them out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but if I try to, like, try to um, accompany that a little bit with some, some darker colors, I don't want them to overpower anything, so what I wanna do is try to complement that with a different color combination. So at this point, if, you don't, if you're not sure what your color, your lights can do, I um, just wanna scroll through them again. You can kind of go through each color combination, see what looks good for your eye, what, what kind of song you're in, and then go from there. Rules of, like what are some basic rules of thumb you go by uh, color-wise when, when selecting, especially if you're combining two colors together? Yep, so I don't wanna do two really, really saturated colors together. For example, if I um, take my wash fixtures and go all the way red with them and my spots and do um, dark blue, that typically is a different look that you normally don't see. Um, sometimes it can look good depending on what you're trying to accomplish, but I wouldn't really do that for a Sunday or a worship song. Um, so I can take, if I want to keep that, keep I like my spots the way they are with that dark blue, I can then take my wash lights and desaturate them a little bit and change the color. And it brings out a nicer, a nicer feel to where it's a little more complete. Are there any colors you avoid? Um, colors I avoid are yellow <laughs> and green. Yeah, that kind of looks like the green goblin. Right. <laughs> um, unless it's you know for a youth show or some sort of concert or whatever, I typically for worship don't use um, any yellow at all. I don't think I've ever used yellow or green. I use amber sometimes because amber can look really good when you use um, a more natural color looking amber. But when you go yellow, it just tends to look a little bit, a little bit gross. So there's kind of your amber look. Um, and kind of going back to what I said too um, on creating different positions and looks, just because they are movers doesn't mean they have to move. And so some of the best looks I've seen on lighting aren't actually moving lights. They're just, they're on in a specific position, but they're intentional about where they are. And so for these spot fixtures, if I move them to the center, downstage, there's a great quick look that had a focus on the downstage center area. If you have one vocalist or um, a violinist or someone, or two, two or three people downstage, uh, kind of a more special type song, special worship song, um, creating that intentional look really goes a long way and it helps focus on what, help, helps people focus on what they should be focusing on yep. on stage. Yep, so moving lights don't always have to move. 
Then the final thing I wanted to ask you about was just haze. How do you guys how do you guys approach using haze here in worship? That can I know it's you know it's important for the Holy Spirit to dwell here. There has to be some haze, you know, in the atmosphere. <laughs> I think it was a Babylon Bee article about that a couple years back. It's pretty funny. But what what is just seriously talking? Like people think, ah, your church uses fog machines, ah, you're like from the devil. It's like what what is the purpose of haze? So haze is, for our room, it, it kind of fills in the space a little bit more. It kind of creates some atmosphere for worship. Um, so um, if we were not to have haze in this room at all, the lights, yes, you could still have color. You could still do color changes. Um, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't feel complete without haze. We wouldn't see those beams right now. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't see the beams. Yeah. Um, not that it's all about the beams, but it helps create the It's the all atmosphere. about the beams. It looks, the beams are amazing. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, but seriously, though, it's like you have these really nice lighting fixtures. To me, the haze is like, it's a piece of the lighting fixture almost. Like, right. you know, it's not, the people who make these lighting fixtures make them in mind with like, you know, they, you know, and those beams can, can't those things like do different like texture beams and like gobos. moves, gobos? Yeah, like those things like have to have haze to really have any effect. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. So obviously you don't want to be obnoxious, but something like that, like, so like it looks like sparkly starlight or something. Even just like, yeah, that subtle movement, if you didn't have haze, the only thing you would see is the gobos on the floor. Correct. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it kind of helps, especially with cameras, it helps create the look, feel a little more complete, a little more full with your lights, what you got going on. Um, and it definitely adds to the experience for sure. Yeah. And like, I'd say like the, my final like little I don't know, thought on all of this stuff is like sometimes we think about lighting and production, we kind of get all caught up in like, oh, we're just trying to put on this big show and entertainment. But what we're really doing, I, I, I strongly believe, this is why I'm so passionate about it, is that we're really just helping focus people's attention on God and why they're here. Uh, we want people to focus on the, the lyrics of the worship songs that they're singing. We want people to be able to focus on uh, the message that the pastor is preaching. Um, so it's not about entertainment, having a bunch of flashy lights and cool haze and stuff like that. Um, it's really, I feel, I feel, and I know it's about focusing people's attention on, on the gospel um, here during worship. So. Um, Mark, thanks so much uh, yeah. for these lighting tips. Uh, you taught us how to light a speaker, a worship leader, how to use color effectively, how to use haze effectively. Um, I think this is super helpful stuff. I'm going to take back to my church ministry and apply there. So Awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned a ton about the best practices and essentials of lighting design for a church worship context. Mark, if you're watching this, thank you so much for taking the time to walk through your approach to lighting design. And I know I've taken away a ton of great ideas I'm going to apply to my church ministry context. And I know other folks who've watched this video will be able to do the same. And before you go, I wanted to let you know about a free gift I have for you. It is my worship toolkit. I've linked it below in the description of this video. It is my complete list of all the gear and software I use in my worship ministry. I'm at a small church plant and I know sometimes it can be tough finding all the right resources for ministry. So that's why I've compiled this all together into one list called my worship toolkit. You can click the link in the description, complete the form. I'll send you instant access to that toolkit. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, share it with your other friends in ministry, and make sure you don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.